NBC News says the FDA poised to ban menthol cigarettes this week, experts predict. Now, this is from last week, I believe. This is a weird move. Why would you ban menthol cigarettes? Why not ban all cigarettes? Hmm. It says here the action would not remove menthol tobacco from stores immediately, but rather kick off the rule making process to do so, which could take several years. Hello and welcome to The Ordeal. Thank you for visiting my channel and thank you for supporting me in all the ways that you do. If you're new to my channel, I challenge all things woke. This is definitely going to be woke. Just wait and see. It's going to be fun. I had computer work done. Yay. We'll see if uh, I need to have more computer work done. I think I'm going to need to have more, honestly. But I had a huge change to my system, so I should probably just buy a new computer at this point. It's becoming such a headache. Anyway, on to the article. The Food and Drug Administration appears likely to move to ban menthol in cigarettes this week, a step, experts say, that has been years in the making and that could have significant positive impact on the health of black Americans. Never mind Hispanic Americans, white Americans, or Asian Americans. Never mind just banning cigarettes altogether because it's a health concern for anybody who smokes. Now, I am anti-cigarette, so if you are a smoker and watching my channel, welcome. I'm not going to um, get on your case about any of that sort of thing. But I mean, we, we all know, in this country we all know, but that it's not good for you to do that. And there was a huge campaign for decades, starting in the 80s, for like three decades. No, two decades, starting in the 80s, to get people off of cigarettes. And now, it's my understanding that the tobacco producers in the country don't make that much money off of the American market. They make their profits off of the foreign market, the international market. But the thing is, why are we focusing on black Americans, one, when there's all sorts of different races that smoke? I mean, everybody smokes. Why we've got to focus on the black ones, black smokers. I guess I, I, I know where my government stands. Okay, thank you, United States. The FDA's decision would not ban menthol immediately, but rather kick off a rule. Yeah, we already read that part. The winds are definitely in our favor, said Del Monte Jefferson, executive director of whatever, citing both the decades of data that show that the cooling flavor in cigarettes makes it easier to start smoking combined with the current cultural momentum towards improving the lives of black Americans. <laughs> when inhaled, menthol produces a cooling sensation in the throat, reducing the harsh taste of cigarettes and the irritation of nicotine. The vast majority of black smokers, 85%, use menthol cigarettes. The black men and women are much less likely than white Americans to be diagnosed with lung cancer at an early, potentially more treatable stage. Black men have the highest lung cancer death rate in the country. Why is that? Is it because that... Uh, Doctors just don't screen black men for lung cancer? Or is it the black men don't go looking to be screened for lung cancer? In my experience, it's the latter. It's not the former. Black people just don't go to the doctor as much. Black people aren't are incapable of going to the doctor as much because there's more poverty in their communities as well. Black people are more likely to suffer from poverty, so you know, they just don't have the money to go to the doctor. They're less likely to have health insurance. And that's not necessarily right. I'm for, I'm for universal health care. I think everybody should have a, a crack to go to the doctor if they, they get sick. You're going to try to get better anyway. You're going to try to do whatever you can within your means to, to try and get better when you're sick. So you might as well just make it legal for them to just go get, see a doctor. You know, I understand there are financial questions as to whether or not that could work. I mean, I think we're already paying for like 70% of health care in this country anyway. So might as well just push for the, the other 30%. When you combine high rates of smoking with systemic racism, I don't even know what this is. I don't even know what systemic racism is. Can anybody tell me? In healthcare systems, you have a tremendous health disparity, said Erica Schward. Both the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention and the National Institutes of Health recently announced plans to address structural racism in healthcare. Yeah, okay. I've been to black doctors. I've been to Asian doctors. I've been to white doctors. I don't know if I've ever been to a Hispanic doctor. No, I have actually. I've been to a Hispanic doctor. Yeah. So I've been to, you know, the four major races that we, we talk about. I've been to Indian or Middle Eastern doctors for sure. Um, so I've been to all sorts of different types of doctors. And uh, I can tell you that if there's a problem with healthcare, it's not because of the race of the individual. It's because of the individual uh, not going to the doctor. The FDA faces a Thursday court-ordered deadline to respond to a citizen petition sent to the agency in 2013 urging it to ban menthol as a flavor in cigarettes. When the FDA failed to act at the time, 
two groups of African-American tobacco control leadership councils and action on smoking and health sued. Wow. You sued them because you think that the government doesn't have your best interest at heart. Why not sue the tobacco company? What, why are you suing the FDA? Or sue the tobacco company. This doesn't <laughs> why are you banning this for black people? Isn't that illegal? I mean, don't we have a 1964 Civil Rights Act that says everybody should be treated equally no matter what the color of their skin, texture of their hair, shape of their eyes, genetic makeup? Everybody has to be treated equally. So why aren't, yeah, maybe I should sue the federal government, the FDA, for banning menthol for the sake of black people. Get woke, go broke. It's possible a decision could come earlier than Thursday, and because the lawsuit only mentions regular cigarettes, it's unclear whether electronic cigarettes and other tobacco products that contain menthol would be affected. The FDA was poised to ban menthol flavoring in 2018 under the leadership of then-commissioner Dr. Scott Gottlieb, but failed to follow through. Gottlieb did not respond to a request for comment. Some advocates of a menthol ban say a national focus on the Black Lives Matter movement may spur the agency to take action now. Wow, these people are so out of touch. I mean, I don't know about what the author actually thinks, but what they're saying is that the government is going to agree on banning menthol cigarettes because of BLM. If that's true, then the government is way out of touch with what's actually going on, which wouldn't surprise me. BLM has nothing to do with actually saving black lives. It has to, everything to do with punishing white people. Uh, the BLM is misguided in thinking that if you punish white people, black people will have better lives, but that's not true. The beer flu and the racial awakening we had last summer exposed the inequities in our system. Jefferson said, menthol is just another example of the health inequities that have plagued African Americans for generations. Are you kidding me? Menthol is not a health inequity. Menthol is a decision. Black people choose to smoke. Nobody's holding a gun to your head and saying, you got to smoke the cigarette. Nobody's doing that. White people smoke horrendously, right? There's a lot of people in the world that smoke of every single different race. Nobody puts a gun to your head and says you must smoke. Black people can make the decision as to whether or not they want to smoke and whether or not they want to go to the doctor to get screened for lung cancer. It's their choice. Why is it that you feel like you have to coddle them? Why is it that, oh, they're, oh, they're little pets. Oh, my, little, my little pet back boy, oh yeah. You are disgusting with this. Black people can make decisions on their own. If they want to smoke mentholated cigarettes, that's their choice. It's illegal. I think you just make it all illegal. You want to solve the problem? Cigarettes are illegal, period. Boom. No more cigarettes, pipes, chewing tobacco, cigars, all illegal. No problem. No, no, more, no more health problem anymore. It's gone. Ah, oh, you people. Personally, I am more optimistic about the FDA doing the right thing on menthol than I have been in a decade, Sward said. Others are less confident the FDA will act, including Pebbles Fagan. Who, is it Pebbles is an actual name? I thought that was something made up for that cartoon. Okay, uh, there's weird shit in the world that I don't understand. The director of the Center for the Study of Tobacco at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences. It is possible that the agency could delay a response by asking the court for more time, even if a decision to start the banning process does come back this week. Fagan said she was skeptical the move would be prompted by the social issues that surfed it, that surfaced in 2020. Yeah, I, I think that it would be prompted by those social. I think that we can say that everything moving forward in the world is going to have a tie to 2020. The year 2020 is going to be a nexus point for everything because you got people like me standing up against it going, hey, what the hell are you doing telling me that I am evil because I'm white? What the hell are you doing telling me that I'm evil because I'm male? That has nothing to do with anything. Get over yourself. Or you have the other people saying, oh, you're evil because you're white and male. All starting in 2020. It took a lawsuit for FDA to pay attention to this issue, she said. If the FDA does decide to move forward with the, a ban, menthol will not disappear overnight. In essence, such an announcement would simply be a way to tell the public as well as tobacco industry, that the agency intends to ban the flavoring in cigarettes. The rulemaking process would likely take several years to finalize and implement. That would provide time to boost smoking cessation programs targeting menthol smokers. Every smoker who uses menthol cigarettes needs help to quit, Swear said. <laughs> only the menthol, so menthols are the only ones. Yep, just the menthols. The regular ones, oh, nope. <laughs> 
There is evidence that such a ban could pay public health dividends. A study published in the journal Tobacco Control this month examined how menthol cigarette bans enacted in Canada from 2016 to 2017 affected smokers. While nearly 60% of surveyed menthol smokers switched to regular cigarettes, those who used menthol before the ban were significantly more likely to make multiple attempts to stop smoking. More than 20% were able to quit. So is this just a ploy to reduce the number of smokers in the country? Like I said, if you want to do that, I mean, maybe they're afraid of rebellion, but if you want to do that, just ban cigarettes, period. <sighs> there was also evidence to, of reduced relapses among former smokers. Okay, so maybe they all went back to smoking. We don't even know. The enormous success of the Canadian menthol ban makes it even clearer now that the U.S. should finally ban menthol. Study author Geoffrey Fong said, From our findings, we estimate that Banning menthol cigarettes in the U.S. would lead an additional 923,000 smokers to quit, including 230,000 African-American smokers. Oh, oh, okay. So this is really about the non-blacks then because 923 is a much bigger number. It's like four times as much as 230. So it's really about that other two-thirds. It's like when they say three out of four homeless people are women. Or sorry, they, they, they say the other way around. One in four homeless people is women. Well, what about the other three? <laughs> Fong, a professor of psychology and public health and health systems at the University of Waterloo in Ontario, said other vulnerable groups might also benefit. LGBT, of course, yeah. They're, they're vulnerable, all right. They're so vulnerable. We need to, we need to make sure we have these, this group of people, these, these people that are confused about what sex is around because if we don't have them oh my gosh the human race will, will fail that entire group of people will be gone <laughs> i got nothing to, i don't want to hurt lgbtq people but i mean if, if you're worried about like having a failure in a group of people i don't really think you need to worry about that one because you know the majority of the population has been non-lgbtq forever and yet we still got these lgbtq people so i don't think you gotta worry about that one. Oh, they have a higher rates of menthol tobacco use as do adolescents. Oh, okay. Can you like maybe give me some, some numbers here? Or are you just going to throw this out there? Like it's true. Literally half of the kids who smoke use menthol, said Matthew Myers, president of the campaign for tobacco-free kids. We would dramatically cut the number of kids who ever become tobacco users if they didn't have menthol as a pathway. Okay, well, that, that might be a valuable uh, avenue of approach then. However, why are you focusing on the blacks? Why don't you say, hey, we're focusing on kids? Oh my gosh, if you focused on kids, it said this, look, look, like most kids start smoking because of menthol. Okay, that would be a legitimate thing I could understand. Prohibiting the manufacture and sale of menthol cigarettes, Myers said, would have the greatest impact on public health that governments have ever taken. Really? It would, would it? I think building codes might might be a bigger impact than, than uh, eliminating menthol cigarettes, but... You know, I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't live in a time before there was building codes, so. But this getting woke and going broke stuff, you know, what about the the tobacco manufacturers? Like I said, their, their profits mostly come from international market. They do make sales, obviously, in North America. Quite a few sales. But are they going to go broke? So is that going to hurt our economy? I would, you know, I, I already said I need to ban cigarettes. So it's not really a worry of mine if this hurts the tobacco industry and subsequent other industries that operate around the tobacco industry, etc. But getting woke and going broke is a real thing. And look what happened to Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola pauses aggressive diversity plan after chief lawyer resigns. Wonder why? Hmm, maybe sales dropped? I don't drink Coke. I don't buy Coke products. Stay away from Dasani. That's made by Coke. Bottled by Coke. Filtered by Coke. Just filtered water. But yeah, you could go through this article here and you can see that Coca-Cola has pulled back on its racial diversity training. It's not pulled back completely, only only a bit, uh, as much as they can, I guess. They're, they're, uh, they're going to continue to, to have woke diversity training as, long, as far as they can within the law, within the limits of the law. Because, you know, it's illegal to sit around saying, you know, white people are the cause of all the world's problems. White people can't do this. White people can't do that. Black people can't do this. Asian people can do this, et cetera, et cetera. You're not allowed to say those things in a work environment. So I don't, I don't know why th these these companies think they can get away with it. I called out my company immediately when they started talking this BLM stuff. I'm like, you can't even 
mention that. You're already doing stuff that's illegal, and I'm calling you out on that too regarding race and gender. I haven't heard anything about it since. They pulled back on it as much as they could. They gave us MLK Day off. Okay. Most of my life I've had MLK Day off, so it's like I have no problem honoring Martin Luther King, honoring a man who says, hey, you know, we're all equal. I have no problem honoring a man who, who devoted his career to that and then died for that cause. No problem at all. If you want to give him a day off, that's fine. But anyway, I guess I digress. Get woke, go broke. This is another example, the mentholated stuff, getting rid of the menthol stuff. You're going to ideally, let's see that, you know, cigarette use drops dramatically because of this. I see it with my mother. My mother's an avid smoker, always been an avid smoker. Says, hey, there's nothing wrong with smoking. It's not going to hurt you. You're full of garbage. You listen to these pointy-headed liberals, and they don't know what they're talking about. The rant is, is, you know, epic, I'm sure. I don't remember it well enough to to give it to you now. But she's been smoking for over 50 years, and now she's having trouble. Imagine that. Now she doesn't have the energy she used to have. She's like, yeah, I can't get enough oxygen into my lungs when I try to exert myself. And she lives in the north where, hey, you need to exert yourself more often to, you know, do things because it's just you have worse weather situations in the north, generally speaking, than you do in the south. So it's harder to get along. You also, you know, have a limited growing season. So you got to make sure that all your food is together. Now it doesn't matter so much these days because we got the grocery stores, but she was an avid gardener for decades. So I would always eat food out of the garden when I was growing up. Not that processed stuff we get in the uh, grocery stores. Anyway, that's a that's just an, one example of what happens when you smoke, especially when you smoke a lot. You could damage your body, and then when you're you know you're going to suffer in your old age. It's it's not like people say, "Hey, I uh, I got to die of something. I got to die of something." Well, yeah, you got to die of something. But I'd rather be strong up until the very end. My grandmother, my father's mother, she was like 88 and a half. When she went into a nursing home and then she was dead at 89. That's a pretty good run. Make it that long and you, you know, you're active the whole time. Pretty good. And it's easier to do that if you don't smoke. So anyway, that was my thoughts on this, on the issue. Don't know why we got to be woke all the time. Doesn't make any sense to me because it's just, we're shooting ourselves in the foot. This country is going to hell in a handbasket and I will see you all next time.